<laughs> this is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. This show is brought to you by Pet King Brands, the makers of Zymox and Oratine. It's OBA with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces. They're perfectly pampered pets in Who's Walking Who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the All Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. We have a great dog advocate in the house. As you will learn, having a dog or more in your life is good for your health, especially now, right, guys? She is also on a mission to unleash advice that is backed by science and by veterinarians so that you can make informed decisions on such things as what to feed your dog, how to train your dog, and much, much more. I think we should think of our guest today as the dog answer gal. Please give pause and applause to the top dog at WAG Out Loud, the very possum, Krista Karpowitz. Welcome to the show, Krista. Arden, thank you so much for having me. I have been looking forward to this. I always enjoy catching up with you, and I appreciate all that you do to help pups and the people that love our pups. So you're awesome. Well, no, I'm sorry. You're possum. Well, so are you. Hey, guys. (laughs) Krista's here to help share some tips on how to maximize that life you share with your tail wagger. But we got to pay for the show first. So you guys know the drill. Let's sit and stay We'll be right back. Time for a pause. Four furry ones actually sit and stay. Oh, behave. We'll be right back. Pause up, everyone. Arden Moore here, the host of the Oh, behave show. Raise your paw if you love frozen desserts. I know I do. And so do my canine trio of Bujo, Kona, and Emma. They drool with delight when offered this sweet treat. And now all dogs will have plenty to yap about. That's because Ben and Jerry's has just unleashed not one, but two doggy desserts. Your dog can enjoy the Ponce Mix made with peanut butter and pretzel swirls or Rosie's Batch made with pumpkin and mini cookies or put a little of both in their bowl. Yum, yum for the tum tum. Now, when you treat yourself to a bowl of your favorite Ben and Jerry's ice cream, mine is the classic Cherry Garcia, your dogs can enjoy the Ponce Mix or Rosie's Batch or a blend of both. Do you know what time it is? Why, it's Ben and Jerry's time. I see Happy, Bujo, Kona, and Emma heading my way. Check out the Ben and Jerry's doggy desserts at BenJerry.com. That's B-E-N-J-E-R-R-Y.com. Pause up. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the Old Behave show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Our special guest today is comfortable behind a microphone, walking a dog, understanding pet food labels, and, as we're going to find out, has a Disney connection from her past. She is also the host of a must-hear podcast. It's called Wag Out Loud. Please welcome to the show my friend, Krista Karpowitz. Howdy, Krista, because I'm from Dallas, and I'm in my backyard office, aptly named Ard's Den, with three dogs and three cats our furry Brady Bunch, and they're all ears for you, Krista. Howdy, Arden. Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. So let's do a little backtrack. She's in Denver. We know this, guys. She's married. She's got a cool dog, uh, Karen Terrier, right, named Winston? Norwich, close Norwich, though. that's right. Norwich is the ears up. Norfolk. Yes, the flap. Down. Folk is F. 
that would be a fold. Norwich is like a witch's hat, and that would be Norwich. But you've got it. Your Winston is more bewitching, right? He's typical terrier, and terrier people know what that means. But I love him. I love this breed. He goes everywhere with us. And he's a senior, right? How old is he? He'll be 12 in April. Wow. Have you had him since a pup? Yes. I actually created him. Are you the first woman to have a litter of puppies? Nobody knew this until now. <laughs> Isn't it I know. <laughs> a pup's out my, of the bag. My mother had his mother, and I had a Norwich before him that lived to 16. And she said, if you pay the stud fee, we will breed my dog, and you'll have pick of the litter. So enter Winston. Wow. So what is it about the terrier, specifically the Norwich, that says, I love this breed? So many things. Their personalities are amazing. They are a big dog in a little body. This right. guy goes snowshoeing with us. Wow. He goes cycling with us in his little backpack. He's right behind me. He goes on eight mile hikes. You know, he is a tater tot with legs, but he goes. I used to date a tater tot with legs, but you Did know. you? <laughs> that's <laughs> we, another story. <laughs> we're now just spud buds. Oh, that's <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Hey, I want people to know a little bit about you because like so many people that are in the pet world, you left a very safe net. You were in marketing and sales. Uh, you were getting that steady paycheck and things like that. So tell people a little bit about your, your background before you ventured into the world of Woof. Thank you for asking. Uh, my background was mostly sales and marketing and event planning. That was my former life. And before I decided to go on this venture, I was part owner in a company that did small business advisory. Okay. Loved, loved, loved it. But here comes the but. There's a but. There was no passion. Passion is dogs to me. Okay. And a few years ago, I was out on a walk with Winston and I was just thinking about my curiosity on dog food. And I just decided I am going to take a certification class in canine nutrition. So, oh, yes, I got to give a little cred for your credentials. You've taken certification classes in canine nutrition, and you're also a certified raw dog food nutrition specialist. Did I do that right? I got that certification through the Dogs Naturally Magazine University, and that was a tough, tough course. You guys, this is true science. <laughs> Woo! And if you did chemistry and biology in school and thought it was overwhelming, you're right. Yeah. It's a lot of information, but good, good stuff. Well, I like that. But I did sort of tease the listeners about the land of Mickey and Minnie. And you said that, uh, well, in your bio on LinkedIn, it mentioned uh, for a while you were affiliated with Disney. Yes, I was doing sales for the Disney Institute, and they would send a team of their Disney executives all around the world to put on events to talk about how they do business, you know, behind the scenes in Disney, how they do customer service, how they do leadership. So I was the one that picked the locations and filled the seats of these wow. events. Did you get free Disney admission tickets or anything? I did not, but Man, I mean, you didn't really even get to money. meet Min <laughs> You didn't get to meet Minnie or Goofy or anybody? Just personally. I mean, I've I've been to Disney World and Disneyland and love going, and of course, I think my next dog I would love to name Disney. I just think that's a cute name for a boy or a girl. Yeah, you, it will work too, and you'll have to tell them so you get free admission. There you go. I there like you it. Go. Hey, wag out loud. Now, we met, I guess, almost two years ago through a mutual friend, uh, Dawn Celepino. She's with Leash Your Fitness in uh, San Diego area. Years ago when I lived there, my two dogs, Cleo and Chipper, and I were working out with her people dog fitness group. And somehow, I think she made the intro, didn't she? She did. Yes. Okay. Love Dawn. <laughs> She's got a lot of energy. So you said to me, hey, I'm going to create a podcast and I'm going to call it Wag Out Loud. That's nice to say, but any tips for anybody out there? Because we at Pet Life Radio, we've been uh, doing podcasts for 13 years plus. So 
it might be nice to share a few tips for people that, like yourself, what were some of the the hurdles you had to leap over with uh, Winston at your side? Well, I think I am the most non-tech person in the world. So this I think it's a tie with me. Well, I don't know, Arden. (laughs) This was a challenge. In my J-O-B that I had before this, I was behind the scenes in my partner's podcast. So I would get the guests. I would do the editing and the producing, get the sponsors. So I knew about that. But being front and center, didn't know the first thing. So I actually took Pat Flynn's Power Up podcasting course, and that saved my life. That dumbed it down step by step. (laughs) Here's what you need to do. And once I went through that, I was ready to roll. You had me on as one of your guests. I think when you first started out, I did the Mutt Giver as a pet first aid gal. Um, But I'm looking now, uh, guys, if you go to wagoutloud.com, you're going to hear things on doggy breath, ear infections, CBD, healing, or hype. Look at you with your alliteration. Uh, Disaster preparedness. You've got my, we're going to dive right into this one. The price of poop. You had me a good one. So tell us what that one was about. That was about how dog poop is affecting our environment. And people don't realize the detrimental facts on if you don't pick up after your dog, what that means. And it's, I don't know the statistic offhand because that was a while ago, but it is staggering if you listen to how much dog poop is accumulated and you think just picking it up with plastic bags, it's okay. It never goes away. In our landfills, all of this poop in just plastic grocery bags, they never degrade. Uh And a lot of them are in the ocean. So it's just a fascinating episode about how we can clean up after our pets in biodegradable bags that do exist and make the world a much better. I use them for Bujo, Kona, and Emma. We use biodegradable bags. And I don't ever want a stinky landmine under my sneaker. That's the worst feeling, isn't it? When you're walking and all of a sudden you feel that gush. Arden, it's not just that, it's rude. Yeah, it is. It's part of dog ownership. I don't know how people think they can get away with not picking up with all the friggin' rings and Arlo's and other cameras. We are on camera 24-7 now when we walk our dog. So maybe that's one Benny is that you you get caught, right? Well, I, I call people out. If I see it happening and they just walk on by, Oh no, excuse me. I have extra bags. Would you like one? (laughs) So yeah, it's priceless. A look on somebody's face when you call them out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. So what do you like best about hosting Wag Out Loud? The education. It seems that in this industry, as you know, things seem to change on a daily basis, whether it's technology, whether it's science, new treatments, And we need to always be learning. And that's why I'm so big on being an advocate for your dog. And I'm trying to dumb everything down. The information out there is just overwhelming. Who do you believe? Where do you go get your information? There are so many contradictory. When I was a reporter for 20 years as an investigative reporter, best advice from an editor, if your mother tells you she loves you, check it out. Yeah, you're right. You've got to do your own research, guys. You have to be your dog's advocate. They can't talk. Oh, they can talk to us. They have a way of telling. Yes, exactly. So when your vet says, yeah, your dog needs their shots every single year, question that. Most of the vaccines, even the companies that produce them, say that they last much longer than a year. So over-vaccinating is a huge problem and causing many illnesses and disease. So ask the questions, you know, get a titer instead. And if you don't know what that is, look up what a titer is and you can get that in lieu of a vaccine. And she brought up a good point. Uh, Years ago, the way uh, veterinarians would get people to at least come back once a year for a yearly exam would be the onus that your dog's vaccines are due and things have shifted. So I am hoping with people like yourself, we can educate people. And when you talk about a titer, folks, it is a way to show if the antibodies are in the doggy's body so you don't have to add another vaccine. Did I do that right? 
That is correct. Yes. I mean, puppy shots. Yes. Your puppy needs their shots, preferably in single shots. You don't want to combine vaccines, which a lot Mm -hmm. of veterinarians do. So ask that question. But after the puppy shots, over 90% of adult dogs uh, have the immunity for all of that their entire life. And they don't want them injecting in the same spot with multiple vaccines either, right? Absolutely not. Yes, okay. it's, it's causing a lot of issues. So I love spreading the word about that diet. Okay, well, Huge. let's uh, we're going to pause for that food for thought for a minute because we have to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, Krista Karpowitz of Wag Out Loud, she's got some credentials in the field of canine nutrition. She's going to help us a little bit without having us get into that emotional food fight because food is like a huge, huge red flag with people. But let's just sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Hey, pet pals, Arden Moore here. Welcome to Fall and Winter. Now, this is a great time to take your dog on a hike in the woods, maybe go on a camping trip or a road trip. But just like us, changes in weather can actually impact the skin and ears of our dogs and cats. So if you got a pet who's scratching his ears, chewing on his coat or rolling in mud, help is here. Zymox. For inflamed and itchy paws and coats, you can use the Zymox topical spray. For itchy and irritated ear issues, you can use Zymox enzymatic ear solution. And for baths, you can treat your dog or cat to Zymox shampoo and conditioners. Now, Zymox has been your pet's safe and trusted health ally for 20 plus years. So you can pick up Zymox at your veterinary clinic, most pet specialty stores, and online. To learn more, just visit Zymox.com. That's Z-Y-M-O-X. Do it for your pet. Hey, pet pals, Arden Moore here, host of the OBA show. Great news. New York Times bestselling author W. Bruce Cameron has a new audio book. It's called A Dog's Courage, and it's brought to you by Macmillan Audio. It stars a dog named Bella who gets separated from her humans in a raging wildfire. She finds two young mountain cubs who need her help. Will they survive? Will she reunite with her humans? Hey, I'm no plot spoiler. You need to treat, yeah, I said treat yourself to the Macmillan audiobook called A Dog's Courage by W. Bruce Cameron. Do it today. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hey, this is Katherine Heigl, and you are listening to Miss Arden Moore on OBHAVE on Pet Life Radio. Tune in for more fantastic ideas and tips for your dogs and cats and pets. We're back from the lot. Just checked the paper, and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to OBHAVE. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. We're talking poop. We're talking vaccines. And now, dun, da, 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 we're going to be talking food with our special guest, Krista Karbowitz of Wag Out Loud. She has a podcast, but that's her brand, too. So I want you to sniff around her site after the show, wagoutloud.com. Let's dive into that food bowl because, bless you, people are very passionate about their dog's food, what they feed, when they feed, how they feed. And you're facing a pretty tough battle because people think they know. Yes. So let's talk about food. We've been taught that those little dry kibble is okay. That's what we should be feeding our dogs. And that's been over 50 years, you know, put a couple scoops in the bowl and that's what you get for the rest of your life. I equate that to, if I were to give you, Arden, Captain Crunch cereal (laughs) twice a day for the rest of your life, A, would you be satisfied with that? Or in B, do you think you're getting the proper nutrition? Or C, would I make you walk the plank because I'm tired of eating it? That's right. I I gotcha. So you guys, whole fresh food is so much better for us. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing for our dogs. And we have to realize that. And 
I just love educating. You know, I'm not going to shame you if you feed kibble. Great, because we all have different budgets. But there's things that you can add to that kibble, you know, two, three times a week that can greatly benefit your dog, whether it's a freeze-dried topper, whether it's maybe just scrambling up a couple eggs. Arden, you know, eggs are the best protein source when it comes to having all of the amino acids that that's right are needed. And it's so inexpensive. A can of sardines and water, same thing. Got that omega-3 cooking at you, right? Absolutely. Good stuff. Well, we give uh, canned pumpkin, too, to our babies. That's fantastic. Yep, that's and, great uh, for their digestive system. And I, uh, I actually wrote a dog cookbook with a veterinary nutritionist called Real Food for Dogs. And uh, Marvelous Mutt Meatballs, big hit Yum. in the in the Moore household. Check it out. <laughs> Who doesn't like meatballs? Well, it doesn't have the saucy spiciness. It has grated carrots, has your egg, has, and uh, I use ground sirloin. Sorry, they don't get the cheap ground beef. And I got to tell you, they see it coming, being made. And uh, we, uh, special occasions, I make up Marvelous Mutt Meatballs or Lip Smacking Green Beans. I have a whole bunch of recipes. <laughs> I'll have to share them with your dog, uh, Winston. But let's talk about food because you're very passionate about that. So people say raw diets. But raw diets in 2021 are so vastly different than they were in 1981. I actually have single protein freeze-dried treats that I give to my pets. I, I don't know if I'm, I'm not going to mention a brand, but I like it because I know exactly what's going in their gullets and it's very convenient on a dog walk. So talk about like what's happening in raw food these days, because some people think, oh, no, it's, I'm going to have uh, salmonella at the party because I forgot to refrigerate. But there's a lot of options, right? There are, Arden. And, you know, I think the whole freak out about salmonella and other bacteria on raw is for the people. It's not the dogs. You guys, the dog's stomach, their gut, <laughs> think about it. They eat poop, grass, rocks, twigs. Come on. Yeah. The reason we're not hearing about the benefits from raw from large companies is because it's the large companies that own these kibble brands that have the money, unfortunately. That's right. Yep. The raw food, you have to hear it from people that, yes, it's a benefit. Shinier coat, smaller, firmer stools. I mean, gut health right there. Do you guys know that over 80% of the immune system is in their gut? And same with us. Well, and also uh, certain things cause inflammation. And inflammation and carbs can also impact their health like the big C, right? Well, yeah. You're, <laughs> you're talking my language, girlfriend. Woo, I just pulled that one out of my head. Okay, good. <laughs> Six out of 10 dogs are getting cancer these days, and those rates are ever increasing. Why? Well, diet is a huge reason that those numbers are going up. So we have to look at what we're feeding our dogs. And you talked about inflammation. You know, a lot of this kibble that has very low protein and very high carbs and starches is a bowl of inflammation. That is what we're feeding to our dogs. And somebody might say, oh, but it says on the bag, complete and balanced. Well, people call me complete and balanced, but they're fooled. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, AFCO is the supposed organization that regulates the dog food industry, and there really isn't any regulation. And the vitamins that are put into this kibble are all synthetic. And it's because the high heat process of making this dry processed food bakes out any of the nutrients that might have been there in the beginning. So that's, that's right. why I say, you know, if you have... A lot of dogs, a lot of big dogs, you just don't have the money to feed raw or homemade. Then put something on top of the kibble because you know that you've got the standard vitamins and you can always add leafy greens, blueberries. You know, I could go on and on. Well, yeah, let's talk about a few toppers because that helps people. I top ours with um, with uh, tuna water. Sometimes they get sardines. Sometimes they get uh well, they always get canned pumpkin because the poop's always good in the backyard. But these are little toppers. If I'm a dog, that's like an ice cream sundae. You just put the whipped cream and cherry on top of the ice cream, right? Absolutely. So talk about toppers because I think that's an affordable option for people. 
It is. And you don't have to do it every single day. You know, with vegetables, because dogs have a harder time eating raw vegetables, I would say maybe get frozen spinach or frozen kale that's already chopped. You can put some of that on top. We talked about the eggs. We talked about the sardines, blueberries, high in phytonutrients, antioxidants. Yeah, all day long. Or just maybe give one as a treat. You don't have to give a lot. That's right. You know, maybe 5% of their meal can be fruits and vegetable. What's one of uh, Winston's favorite toppers? Oh, my gosh. The eggs, definitely. You know, I lightly scramble the eggs. He loves those. And sardines. They're delicious. Oh, that must be great at doggy kiss time. Yes. (laughs) Fish breath. Yeah, I love you, mama. Yeah. Or, you know, sometimes for those that can't afford to feed raw every single day, maybe get a a freeze-dried raw and you can top with that. Or even just raw meat, Mm -hmm. you know, a few times a week. Yeah. At your local grocery store. I also uh, do bone broth. I'm so glad you said that. And the good thing about that is you don't, folks, please do not put onions or salt in that bone broth. Can you give us some tips on bone broth benefits? Oh, I just did a little oration beautifully. <laughs> bone broth benefits. <laughs> Woohoo! Well, I love making bone broth. It's so easy in your crock pot. And I'd say the number one benefit is the collagen. Mm-hmm. So good for their joints. And I, I give, I think it's about a tablespoon per 10 pounds on your dog. And he gets it every single day and he absolutely loves it. It's actually good for us too. It is. And if you can afford the pasture raised, pasture finished bones and marrow in your recipe, that would be the ideal. Okay. Um, and it lasts a long time. And, you know, some days, I fast him as well. Mm -hmm. So all he gets for that day is just bone broth. So I give him a little break on his digestive system that he's not getting actual food. Don't worry, guys. They're not going to be after you with puppy dog eyes. Like, oh, my God, I'm starving. (laughs) Yeah, we all need to do a a cleanse or a fast on occasion. Yeah, it's just a reboot. Yeah, exactly. So we're getting ready to wrap this up. So tell us a little bit about how people can... Tune into the Wag Out Loud podcast and maybe something that you've got up on the horizon that people can uh, look forward to. Arden, you are awesome. Thank you so much. We have the weekly podcast, wagoutloud.com. You can find it there. Uh, It's on all of the main podcast players. It is free, everybody. So please subscribe. We also have the Wag Out Loud LTOs show that stands for Limited Time Offers. And that's on my favorite products that I have tested and approved at a huge discount. So it's kind of like QVC for dog products live stream. Yeah, I was sniffing around that page. And guys, you can be saving 10, 20 more percent on certain things. So take a look at uh, limited. What is it called? Limited. Limited time offers, LTOs. And then lastly, I have partnered with Dog Is Good, Love Dog Is Good, the lifestyle brand. And if you guys are interested, they have started a new division, Dig Direct. And you too, as a dog lover, can benefit from owning your own business easily, very little effort. I can show you how. And this opportunity is just blowing my mind. So it just launched yesterday. So ask me about it. Dog is good. Uh, Gila Kurtz is an amazing person. She's been on our show, Obehave. And I'm glad you two are partnering. I wish I could do that better. You know how you said there's certain things that are in our bandwidth. That's not in my bandwidth. (laughs) (laughs) No, you've got a lot going on, Arden. That's okay. Yeah. All right. Anything that you think Winston wants to tell everybody before uh, we bid adieu? Boy, Winston probably gives the advice that we need to slow down and think, act, and play like a dog. I like that. Hey, everybody, we're speaking with Krista Karpowitz. She is the genius behind Wag Out Loud. It's got a podcast. It's got a lot of other things. She left the comfortable corporate world and plunged into the land of pets, and she's doing it beautifully. And I consider what you're doing a good crusade. Krista. And I appreciate you, Arden. We're in this together. Let's just educate people. That's right. I also have to give a shout out to my uh, producer, Mark Winter, the Wizard of Paws. He created Pet Life Radio about 13, 14 years ago. So we are the longest continuously running pet podcast on the planet. 
Phew, that's a lot of peace. Also, check out Ardenmore.com. And every Wednesday night, I go to the Cats and I host Meowie Hour. And I create a cocktail because I is a bartender for the Cat Fancier Association. And we champion all cats all over the world. So that's Meowie Hour every Wednesday night. So until next time, this is your flea-free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words to all you two, three, and four-leggers out there. Oh, behave. Coast to coast and around the world, it's Oh, Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.